Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.17 and DECA Ironwork Simulations JF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to bonus video number one, Approach Mode. In this video I will demonstrate the Approach submode of Navigation. Uh, this mode is used to do instrument approaches to airfields, uh, usually in night conditions or poor weather. Uh, today though I'm going to demonstrate it in good weather just so you can see what I'm doing. First thing to do is uh, if we bring up the knee board you'll see that the system automatically loads uh, a bunch of local airfields into certain waypoint numbers. We're looking to return to Akrotiri and we can see here on the knee board that that is waypoint 50. It also confirms to us ATC uh, frequencies, TACAN channel, ILS channel and available runways. We don't need to worry about the TACAN or the ILS here because the approach system will tune those automatically for us. So um, let's uh, enable the mode and then I'll go through the symbology that we get. Your sub mode for uh, nav is always on the top left of the UFC. In this case we're on flight plan A. If I press the line select key beside flight plan A it will show me all the different sub modes that I have available to me. This will only work when in nav master mode, so make sure of that. So we can select flight plan A, bingo mode, approach mode, course mode, or flight plan B. I'm going to go ahead and choose approach mode, and that immediately presents a bunch of symbology, and it also um, it pre-programs things like the TACAN and the ILS. So uh, first things first, I'm going to turn down the ILS and TACAN volumes a bit, because that will become annoying. And then I'm going to cover the symbology that we get on each of the displays. On the HSD, it's currently showing us a flight, plast, a flight path towards what's called the FAF. That's the Final Approach Fix. This is a fix some distance off the end of the runway, which we will then fly through and then align with the runway. We can toggle between approaching the FAF or the runway by pressing the second right-hand line select key. We're now in the runway mode. I'm going to leave it on FAF for now. Um, apart from that, there's not really too much else on the HSD for us to look at. Um, apart from actually distance, here it's giving us the, the distance and the heading that we should fly to intercept the FAF. Uh, on the UFC, we can also toggle what kind of approach we want to do. There are options to do an ILS approach, a TACAN approach, or an SCA. Uh, SCA is self-controlled approach. TACAN and SCA have no glide slope, they only give you lateral navigation. We're going to do the full ILS approach on this occasion. On the left-hand multifunction display, it will confirm to you all the settings that it's currently using. So we're using ILS, uh, it gives us the magnetic heading for the runway. Left-hand side is the settings for ILS, so magnetic course and glide slope. Right-hand side is just for the TACAN, so channel, course, minimum altitude. Uh, it defaults to uh, 220 feet for this. At the FAF, we can tell it whether we want to do a left-hand or a right-hand turn at the FAF. I'm going to do a right-hand turn in this instance, so we're going to fly kind of towards it and do a right-hand circling approach and then go down the ILS. And then last, it confirms to us the lat, long and altitude of the threshold of the runway. So we know the threshold's at 62 feet. If we wanted to fly an approach to a different airfield, we'd simply select the, uh, the waypoint and enter the one that we want. I've now chosen airfield 51, which as we can see from the kneeboard would be Nicosia. And you'll see that all the symbology and information changes to direct us towards that. Let's put it back to waypoint 50, and we're gonna go to Akrotiri. And then up on the HUD, we have the standard uh, navigational tadpole with uh, the course and the distance shown on the end of the tadpole. We have a caret on the heading tape showing us the direction to fly in. And we also have the lateral and glide slope bars uh, showing us how to get to that uh, final approach fix. So let's uh, take us out of active pause now and I'm going to fly the aircraft towards the FAF. And uh, we want to hit the FAF at 3000 feet. Uh, by the way, box on the HUD is the location of the airfield. That just uh, confirms it to us. Okie dokie. So, rolling out, flying directly towards the FAF. And I'll get my altitude down to 
3,000 feet, and I want to be flying at around about 300 knots uh, as I'm approaching the final approach fix. Okay, altitude's coming down. Okay, I'm at about the correct altitude now. I'm going to roll out here because I want to make a gentle turn uh, following this um, this hold that we have at the FAF. And that means that I can then probably roll out on just about the right heading as well. Okay, we're at the correct altitude now. I should level off and I need to give it a little bit more throttle. Just to maintain that airspeed there. So we currently have the distance to the FAF shown here. It confirms the airfield we have selected, airfield 50, and we're 3.7 miles to the FAF. Let's keep this turn coming around. And you can see that I'm starting to come into alignment with the tadpole there. And the heading bars are coming around as well. Need to pull a little bit just to accelerate this turn. And there we go. I'm going to continue following that and we should pass through the FAF at just about the right heading. I'm going to bring down the, the range now on the HSD just to give us a bit more accuracy there. Okay, we're just about to pass through the FAF now. I don't remember whether it auto switches. I don't think it does. So we're now going to press this line select key here to switch it to runway. And we now have heading bars uh, and a glide slope coming down for the ILS approach. I'm just going to allow my speed to come down now. And I'm going to follow the ILS bars all the way down. So I want to get the flight path marker right in the, the heading and glide slope bars here as best I can. Now we're below 300 uh, knots. I'm going to go gear down, flaps down, and I'm going to turn on the landing light. Okay, gear is down. We now have the more accurate pitch bars showing up in landing mode, and we have the E bracket. I'm going to want to follow this glide slope as accurately as I can, and the heading. Imagine that I was doing this you know, in zero visibility. This would be a big help to getting me to the touchdown zone without having a visual reference for the runway. Also note we have uh, our minimum altitude set, which is 220 feet. Uh, on passing 220 feet, we're going to hear the, uh, the oral call altitude, altitude, altitude. And at that point, we need to be able to see the runway. Otherwise, we need to abort our approach. Okay, I need to bring the speed back now because I want my flight path marker to be in the middle of that E bracket. So I, I, currently I'm too fast. And I'm also a little bit high on the glide slope. The, the bars are telling me to descend. There we go. Not too bad. We have fairly good alignment. Speed is coming down to about the right setting. And I'm just about on glide slope now as well. And now I'm low. It's up. Okay, everything's kind of converging now. I'm in the E bracket. I'm basically on the glide slope and I'm on heading. It's all looking not too bad. I'm low on the glide slope. I'm going to raise my nose and give it just a little bit of power.
And that's me pretty much on. Waiting for the altitude call. Need some more power. Altitude, altitude, altitude. Okay, runway is in sight. I'm going to continue. That's us right on the glide slope, right on the heading, right on the E bracket. Okay, getting ready to flare. Roll to idle. Let the aircraft just sink onto the runway. I'm on the ground, deploying the brake chute and using rudder to keep me going straight down the runway. On the brakes a little bit. Nose wheel steering is on. Drop the chute. And let's bring the aircraft to a stop. So there you go. That's a pretty good demonstration of the approach system. Uh, even in very low visibility and poor weather, that should allow you to get down onto the runway quite accurately. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.